This is Koblenz, the town where the Moselle at last joins the fast, broad waters of the Rhine. Moselle and Rhine. What more appropriate place for Johann Friedrich Deinhardt, founder of the House of Deinhardt, to have set up his business as wine merchant? That was back in 1794, and Koblenz was still the sleepy medieval town it had been for centuries. Not at all the bustling modern one you now find. Today, the Deinhardt head offices stand on the site first occupied around 1840, and the cellars, there are three tiers of them, house Hocks and Moselles from the most famous vineyards in Germany. Here, cool and peaceful under the courtyard, lie the successors to the wonderful wines that have graced the tables of the highest throughout these many years, and in every corner of the world. The past is recaptured not in wines alone, but also in the many fascinating relics they will show you in the famous museum. Deinhardt and Company is a family firm. And although there is no longer a Deinhardt in the company, the Haslackers and Weglers, the first of whom joined the firm in 1851, still number eight active members in London and Koblenz. Their expertise in making fine wines has been handed down from one generation to another, and their skill incorporating every detail of the Salomon's art, racking, filtering, fining, even cooperage, is not so very different from the methods of 100 years ago. As you stroll through these three tiers of cellars, you cannot fail to be alive to the feelings of tradition that seem to reach out at you from the very walls. Tradition in itself is not enough, however. Accompanying the firm's old-fashioned attention to detail and ideas of service to their customers has always been a lively interest in new developments. For example, in the grafting of vines and the improvement of existing varieties. The principal grapes used in German wine production are the Riesling, Silvana, Tramina and Muller Thurgau. The Riesling is by far the most famous and is without doubt responsible for the world renown of German wines. In order to preserve and protect this reputation, the German wine laws have always been strict and in 1971 further legislation was introduced to guarantee quality control and simplify the understanding of the label. Even in the vineyards, where you would think the old ways would prevail, you will find plenty of evidence of modernity. And there needs to be, for the vineyards of Germany are amongst the most northerly in the world, and the grower needs every device that up-to-date ingenuity can fashion. Even so, the uncertain climate and the steep slopes, some of them of almost unbelievable one-in-one -one gradient, add to the hazards normally facing the grower of vines. The steepest occur on the Moselle, where the vines have to be individually staked on the slate slopes. On the more gradual slopes of the Rhine, however, they are trained on wires, as in France. The vines in this bleak and austere soil need all the sun they can get, so are planted where they are most likely to receive not only the maximum amount of sunshine, but the maximum reflection of the sun off the water. This slow ripening results in wines of a delicious freshness, their sweetness edged with a subtle acidity obtained by no other means, and therein lies their charm. Probably the most famous of all German vineyards is the Bernkasteler Doctor, stretching high above the Moselle. Legend has it that a 17th century Bishop of Trier was cured of a near fatal disease by drinking the wine after all else had failed, and that in gratitude he renamed the health reviving vineyard Doctor. It was in 1900 that one of the Deinhardt partners bought almost half of that famous vineyard for the then astronomical price of five pounds a vine. Even today that price might seem high, but in fact the vineyard is literally without price, simply because you cannot put a price on the best.
On the Rhine too, Deinhardt has many acres of vineyards. The total area of Deinhardt's vineyards and wine properties is about 74 hectares, over 180 acres, of which 11 and a half are on the Moselle and almost 63 in the Rheingau. Deinhardt's modernity is perhaps even more obvious in its famous plant at Wallersheim, just outside Koblenz. Technologically, it is one of the most advanced and ingenious, not only in Germany, but in the world. Its storage capacity is enormous, and it produces 14 million bottles of sparkling wine alone a year. During the 18 months that it takes to convert the must into the finished article, no human hand is needed. The process is completely automated, and in fact only two men per shift need to be present. It may seem to some that such modern technology has no place in winemaking. In fact, although looking futuristic, the tanks at Wallersheim are no more than giant bottles, and the process adopted in making the wine is natural and faithfully follows traditional methods. The bottling section is no less up to date. Machines fill and bottle at the rate of 40 bottles per minute. Not only sparkling wine is produced there, but also many other imported wines and spirits which Deinhardt market throughout Germany are bottled and warehoused. The connection between Koblenz and London goes back many years, to be precise, to 1825, when a young man called Anton Jordan was sent by Deinhardt to open up a London office. Soon he was selling the best of German wines to regimental messes, ships' wardrooms and West End clubs. Within a few years, Deinhardt wines were being served at royal tables. From London, Deinhardt exports travelled to the furthest limits of the British Empire. Although a leading sparkling wine house, it is in the field of fine still wine that Deinhardt London is mainly interested. The bulk of production from Koblenz being taken for consumption in Great Britain or for re-export. Hans Christoph Liebfraumilch and Bern Kastler Green Label are probably the most famous German wines in Britain. Green Label, in fact, is the brand leading Moselle. At their new offices across the Thames from Westminster, the London branch of the family continue their fine traditions established by their ancestors to produce and sell only wines of the highest quality and offering the best value for the money paid for them. Deinhardt London is now one of the biggest firms of wine shippers in independent hands. That is to say, not owned by a brewery or other large concern. But although their prosperity depends largely on the success of their chief labels, they are still leaders in selling other wines of high quality from small estates. In recent years, too, they've extended their representation to include such famous names as Taylor's Port, Burgundies of Momessa and Mofu, Trimbach of Alsace, and the famous Krauss Scotch Whiskey, all preeminent in their respective fields. This concentration on quality and detail extends also to their customers. It is their boast that each is known to at least one of the directors on personal terms. And it is this highly intimate style combined with their high standards, which have led to Deinhardt's acknowledged position, the best. <laughs>